This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a blessed Sunday. And in the news this morning, for February 26, 2023, office manager at the Spanish Town gas station charged over stolen funds. An office manager accused of stealing over $2.5 million from the gas station where she worked in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, has been charged by the police. She is 30-year-old Sasha Gailey, who has been charged with larceny as a servant. The police report that the complainant conducted an audit of his business account to which Lee, who lives in Portmore, St. Catherine, had access. The complainant discovered that $2,535,000 $520 was missing from the account. The sums were allegedly stolen between November 2022 and February 2023. According to the police, Lee was confronted and she admitted to taking the money. She was later arrested and subsequently charged. Her court date is being finalized. 48-hour curfew announced in Helsha Park, Port Moore. A 48-hour curfew has been imposed in the Helsha Park community in Portmore, St. Catherine, the police announced. The curfew commenced at 6 p.m. on Saturday, February 25, and will continue until 6 p.m. on Monday, February 27. The curfew encompasses the Helsha Main Road, running westerly parallel to Condor Avenue, Helsha Park to the western boundary, approximately 510.8 meters, an imaginary line from the construction dirt road, running westerly to the south of the Helsha Park community to the western boundary, approximately 597.9 meters along Helsha Main Road, starting from 208 meters from the intersection running southerly to the Derta Construction Road to the southern boundary, approximately 635.1 meters, and an imaginary line from the southern boundary running northerly to the northbound west of Helsha Glades community, approximately 597 meters. The news comes hours after a 12-year-old boy and his grandmother from the Helsha Park community were shot while in their bedroom. Judges' absence stalls drug smuggling and money laundering trial. The three-year-long trial of four businessmen who are accused of being major players in a drug smuggling and money laundering ring between Jamaica and the United States is set to continue on March 24. The decision was made when the men Montego Bay residents Robert Dunbar, Delroy Gale, and Louis Smith, along with United States citizen Melford Daly, appeared before presiding parish judge Keisha Grant on Friday. The trial had been scheduled to continue, but the judge presiding over the case was unavoidably absent. The four men are being represented by attorneys at law Hugh Wildman, Tom Tavares Finson, Martin Thomas, and also as the senior Smith, respectively. In September 2019, when the trial began in the St. James Parish Court before Parish Judge Sandra Wong Small, Wildman made an application for it to be discontinued on the basis that the charge was illegal because it was brought under the Repealed Money Laundering Act of 1998, which was replaced by the Proceeds of Crime Act in May 2007. But the application was refused and the trial continued. That same month, Wildman then petitioned the Supreme Court for a judicial review, and Justice Courtney Day granted an order halting the trial until a judicial review application was heard. The Supreme Court's order came into effect after Christopher Drummond, a key prosecution witness who is now serving a 27-year prison sentence in the United States for drug smuggling, gave evidence against the four. In February 2020, the Supreme Court, through presiding High Court Justice Simone Wolf Reese, rejected an application made on Smith's behalf by Waldman, in which the defendant sought a declaration from the court that the initiating of criminal proceedings against him was null, void, and of no effect. That decision by the judge paved the way for the resumption of the trial proceedings in the St. James Parish Court. The allegations against the men are that they were involved in drug trafficking between Jamaica and the United States between 1999 and 2005. Dunbar, Gill, and Smith were arrested on August 30, 2013 during simultaneous raids at their respective residences by officers from MOCA, 
who worked in collaboration with the Financial Investigations Division. Subsequent investigations led to charges being leveled against Daly. Spencer and Jess launch a campaign for St. Elizabeth's seat. Chairman of the People's National Party Region 5, Kern Spencer, and the lawyer Zulika Jess have intensified their campaigns to represent the opposition party in St. Elizabeth Northeastern at the next parliamentary election. In recent months, both had suggested their interest in contesting the seat, which has since led to them applying to be the party's representative. They have ramped up their campaigns in recent weeks. I can confirm that I have submitted an application to represent the party in that seat, Jez told the news last week. When contacted, Spencer was hesitant to confirm that he had applied. However, the news was told that up to the February 6 deadline for applications to be submitted, Jess and Spencer had applied to represent the PNP in St. Elizabeth Northeastern. In January, after two sitting PNP councillors Everton Fisher and Audie Myers told the news that they had thrown their weight behind Jess, Spencer claimed that he has the overwhelming support of comrades in St. Elizabeth Northeastern. The delegates of the constituency have been asking me to be their standard bearer again, and I have been listening to them, and I have been internalizing it in my mind, Spencer had said. Jess told the news that she is surprised at the overwhelming support she has been receiving since she started her campaign in the constituency. I certainly did not expect this kind of support, and so very quickly after that. It had really been phenomenal. It has been a very warm reception, she said. Jess, who lost to the ruling Jamaica Labour Party's giant Mike Henry in the 2020 parliamentary election in Clarendon Central, said that she is not seeking to bring disunity among comrades. On my part, I think my actions would have demonstrated that notwithstanding the results of any particular event, there certainly will be no disruption, she said. Long considered a stronghold of the PNP, St. Elizabeth Northeastern was lost to the ruling Jamaica Labour Party's Delroy Slowly in 2020 among the shock results of that election, which the JLP won by a landslide. Jess said the constituency wants a fresh start, apparently in relation to Kern Spencer, who won St. Elizabeth Northeastern for the PNP in 2007. Spencer was forced to walk away from competitive politics in the build-up to the 2011 elections following corruption charges, which were eventually dismissed related to the so-called Cuban light bulb scandal. I was approached by the majority of the leadership within the constituency to represent Northeast St. Elizabeth as a PNP standard bearer. There were numerous factors that would have led to their decision to engage with me in that respect, and one of those factors was that they felt that I offered a fresh face to the political landscape within the constituency that my character and really just my personality were suitable for the seat, she said. I am happy to have accepted the invitation. I am very humbled to receive the support of the leadership within the constituency, and I am grateful for all the assistance that they have been given in terms of ensuring that there is a victory at the end of this process, she added. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.